In a Northwest Wichita home. Well, this is my statuary hall. Sculptor Babs Mellor shows part of her sculpting collection. And this is a Mac cat for Cardinal Newman at Newman University. This hallway connects her residence to her art studio she's used for years. Here, creating many of her most treasured statues, including this one of Winston Churchill. Mellor has lost count of how many statues, busts, and figurines she has. Mary Elizabeth Leash, she started Hypatia Club, and her statue is down at Century Two. Many of Melor's statues are quite visible, in plain sight. Perhaps you've walked past them, like the Promise of America statue outside Century Two's concert hall. This statue depicts 15-year-old Ferris George Jabara immigrating to America from Lebanon. Jabara pulls all his belongings in a bag, determined to become a success here, which he did. This is the maquette, or miniature, for the Mary Elizabeth Lee statue. You'll find it outside Century Two. Lease was a political activist, lecturer, and writer in the late 1800s, early 1900s, living in Wichita at the time. Her political opponents would cross the street to avoid her and her sharp, opinionated, but not always informed tongue. However, her followers paid to fill auditoriums to hear her speak about populist politics, women's rights, and temperance. In a manner of speaking, life-size statues like this one get birthed in a sculptor's studio like this. Every Wednesday afternoon, Babs, short for Barbara, has some of her former students over to help work on a current project. Our dear Babs <laughs> leader over there says, I've got this little project that I kind of signed up for. Would you be interested? Well, yeah. Well, this little project's going to be about a six-year project, it sounds like, before the end of it. But anyway, we got started and uh, on uh, Lieutenant Blackley. That current project is bringing to life in a bronze statue form the likeness of Lieutenant Irwin Blackley. For those who don't know Lieutenant Irwin Blackley's story, let me give you the cliff notes. Blackley was born and raised in Wichita. He was an artillery spotter and rear seat gunner flying in a de Havilland DH-4 airplane in World War I. Lieutenant Blackley and pilot Lieutenant Harold Gettler are credited with locating what was called the Lost Battalion. Lieutenants Gettler and Blackley were shot down and killed by enemy German ground fire in the process. Both were posthumously awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. Blackley is a Wichita war hero few know about. The Blackley Foundation is working to change that and get Wichita's only Aviation Medal of Honor recipient better known. On Positively Kansas, we've shown you several stories in recent years of the Foundation's work at recovering and restoring a de Havilland DH-4 airplane similar to the one Blackley and Gettler flew in. Getting a life-size bronze statue is part of the plan for a Bleckley public display. It's been great. It's been a lot of fun. That's Babs in the background. She watches the work from the sidelines unless there's a need to step in or to simply make a comment. Look, I'm supervising. <laughs> this is a wonderful group of very talented sculptors. She trusts their work. After all, they were her students at Mark Arts, where she taught for 47 years. I absolutely have learned everything from Babs. I, um, I could sculpt a little by the time I made it to her class because I did mock-ups of, of parts of airplanes with clay, but I really took her class so I could learn the human figure. These maquettes serve the purpose of giving the artist a smaller model of the life-size sculpture they are working towards. But also, the maquettes will be used to help raise the funds needed to pay for the life-size version. We basically have ten, three different sizes and there's 10 of each. And then when somebody donates a certain amount, they will be given a mock head of their choice. So they'll have a little one for a certain mounts and a bigger one for big mounts. And 
The estimated overall cost is $40,000, even with the artists, including Melor, donating their time. This is going to be the full-size head, and then we will make a body for it later. Kane works on this bust while the others finish up their maquettes. The artists work from photos of Bleckley. There is also a standing life-size cutout of the lieutenant the sculptors draw inspiration from. But these are all front-facing, one-dimensional photos. The artists lament not being able to see other sides of Bleckley. And I like it. I like the 3D aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very hard to work from a picture like we're doing here because you can't see the side view and uh, the top view, what he looks like all around. So it makes it difficult when you're just working from pictures. But the artists had an idea to overcome their one-dimensional dilemma. On March 4th, 2023, a ceremony was held at the Kansas Aviation Museum. It was the 100th anniversary of Lieutenant Bleckley's parents receiving the Lieutenant's Medal of Honor. On March 4, 1923, 5,000 turned out at the Wichita Forum to celebrate and remember the Wichita hero who died in battle. Here, 100 years later, Lieutenant Bleckley's great nephew, Michael Irwin, was keynote speaker at this ceremony. I'm Michael Irwin. Irwin Bleckley is my great uncle. To be more specific, he is my mother's uncle. The artists took lots of photos of this Bleckley relative's head while Michael Irwin was here. They figured there could be a resemblance which could help the artists be more accurate in their sculpting. Melor says it's critical for the artists to know all they can about their subject. I really think to get the feeling of, and the likeness and the mood of the statue, you need to know everything you can about the statue. Like we, on Lieutenant Bleckley, we know that he was determined. We're getting pretty close to being finished with this. So I'm just trying to clean up the places that need to be cleaned up. So we're putting a determined look on his face. So there's lots, lots of little minute details to do right at the moment. Because he said we're going to find this lost battalion or die trying, which they did die trying. Another statue of Melors that's visible in plain sight is the Cary Nation statue outside the Eaton Hotel in downtown Wichita at Douglas and St. Francis. This is where Nation infamously vandalized a saloon with her hatchet. Her anti-alcohol temperance protest cost several thousands of dollars in damage, landing her in jail. And when I first sculpted her, I made her look a little too harsh because I'd been reading biographies about her written by men in the East. Melor says those earlier men written biographies of Nation characterized the prohibitionists bitterly cruel. So they wrote harsh biographies about Carrie. Melor says she learned about the generous, benevolent side of Carrie Nation in a visit to the Carrie Nation Museum and home in Medicine Lodge. So I came back to my studio, and you can see over there in the corner, I softened the face. I made her not as harsh. And that softer image is captured in the Carrie Nation statue. Nation made a point of being photographed with her hatchet in one hand and her open Bible in the other. This is the earlier maquette Melor did of Carrie Nation before Melor learned about Nation's benevolent work. And see how much softer she is now. She's just, she's m much softer now. Determined though, very determined. Babs is very determined herself to get the most oh, accurate fine. image of a subject in her sculptures. She's come a long way since her childhood days on the family farm between Wichita and Valley Center. There, she did her first sculpting by playing in the clay mud. Well, I've sculpted all my life, see, so, 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 but after every trip, I, I love to sculpt something I saw on the trip as my souvenir. I can hardly put it, I can hardly say the words, because I cannot believe I'm this old, but I, I'm 94. 
I can't believe it myself. Her age is a factor in approaching the Blackley project. And really, I thought, because this is, this will take several years before we get the big bronze done. And I said, I really need younger people with me on this project. And at 94, it is easier to surround yourself with younger artists. I've had a wonderful life. A sculptor's work will outlive them. And in the decades to come, Babs Mellor's work will be seen and marveled at for generations to come. For Positively Kansas, this is Chris Frank reporting.